So I'm starting off here with my thumbnail drawing that I've blown up to 11 by 17 and printed out as a real light red color. And I go in and I rough in my figures with a red lead. I'm using a lead holder and it's holding a Mitsubishi Uni red, red lead. Um, I like those a lot. And then I do a, a tighter drawing over the top of that red with, I think I'm using a 2B lead right here. So it's a pretty soft lead. I go back and forth between red and and the graphite, sort of when I go to draw it in graphite and I'll realize, oh, I need to work out a few more issues before I commit. Because what I'm going to do later is remove the red and just print out the graphite lines to paint over onto my better paper. Because right now I'm just penciling on some cheap paper that I buy from Kelly Paper. It's, it's Bristol, but it's very thin. It's a lot thinner than Art Bristol. All right, I'm going to skip the part where I scan it in and remove the red, but that's exactly what I do. I just scan it into Photoshop, I remove the red lines, leaving just the graphite lines, and I clean those up just a little bit using levels and curves, and then I print them out onto my good paper. And my good paper is Strathmore 400 series mixed media paper. Um, I like it a lot. It's a, um, it's a lot like a Bristol, except um, that's a little bit thicker, and it has um, internal sizing, which means that the glue that holds the paper together, um, instead of just being on the surface of the paper, is saturated through the whole thing. So it tends to buckle a lot less than even a lot of watercolor papers do. Um, you can see it wrinkles up a little bit, but it's not too bad. It, it never really bothers me. So I started by putting a wash across the entire page um, to sort of beat down the white of the paper. And then I started adding the local color. So the guy's jacket is red, the leaves are orange, the bark is brown, and I've added in some of the shadows. And this black that I'm putting in right now is gouache. And I'd typically save that for the very end, but um, with this I was trying to make sure that I had the feeling of where the blacks were, blackest blacks of the scene were going to be before I went too far. Around this time I'm starting to cut in some shadows. I'm using some blacks and some dark blues to model the, the forms and to separate the foreground and the background. Um, and to get the match the blackest blacks so that it fades out kind of smoothly. The paint I'm using is a combination of M. Graham and Company and Winsor Newton Professional. Um, I've just sort of found the, the colors that I like from those two brands. I've tried a couple other brands, but these are the two that I like the best uh, generally. They're really good, high quality, strong pigments. Um, they lay down nice and flat too, which is good. So I'm getting ready to airbrush some stuff here. So I laid down some, some paper to protect my drawing table a little bit. And you can see I really pushed back those blacks and I tinted the foreground a little bit more yellow to sort of get that nice vignette feel. I really like the way uh, airbrush adds a uh, glow to the lighting. Everything gets really soft and, and spooky. So now I'm going back with gouache and pushing those blacks back just a little bit further. And you can see I did a little bit more rendering on the monster coming through, uh, the abandoned. Now I'm using colored pencils to render those forms a little bit more and add some more detail, like the plaid on the guy's shirt and um, tighten up some of the, the silhouettes a little bit. Add splatter a little bit of paint, some more blacks, and that's pretty much it. That wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching.